So we're going to continue with our theme of the spine. So we're going to work through the spine, different um, motions of the spine. So some extension of the spine, some flexion of the spine, some lateral flexion, both directions, um, and then a little bit of rotation. Right, so we're going to work all through those areas. So knowing that that's our main target, but then you might also come across some areas um, of secondary um, focus for you. It might be your hips, it might be your shoulders, it might be your, um, your knees, right? So just be mindful that there's no pain, there's no tingling sensations, none of that happening. Um, and since you've been with me a few weeks now, people that have been and we've been doing this, if you know when we get into a pose and you know exactly where your edge is, go ahead and go there, right? Today I might explain a few more variations for people, um, like finding the first part of their edge versus deeper part of their edge. So you might want to have maybe a strap if you want to try something new. Um, definitely have something you're going to need to elevate your hips quite a bit because we're going to do a little supported bridge. So have something that your hips can get over your shoulders. So whether it's rolled up blanket and pillows or both, whatever, it's better to go a little bit higher than not enough because when you want to adjust things back in and drop things back in while you're in the pose, it's kind of hard. It's easier to take things out if it's too high rather than put things in. Um, yeah, and we're going to enjoy it. So we're going to first start with a little bit of movement and breath together just to, since we're working our spine, we're going to do a little bit of the spinal flossing. Um, since you're seated, we'll start with our brachial nerve, so that nerve that runs across our, our, um, our chest and our arms from our neck outward. So go ahead and take your arms out and exhale fully here. As good as you inhale, you're going to lean your head to the left as you curl your right fingers to your right shoulder. Exhale back to center. Inhale to the right. Exhale to center. Inhale to the left. Exhale to center. Inhale to the right. Exhale to center. And now we're just gonna add on. So you're gonna inhale to the left, point your left fingers down. Exhale to the right, right fingers point down. Inhale slowly to the left. Exhale slowly to the right. Good, one more round each side. Inhale to the left. And exhale to the right. Good, inhale, reach both arms as head comes to center. And then as you exhale, roll yourself forward, hands and knees. Pad your knees if you need to for a little extra support. We're not going to be here long, just a few rounds here. So this is a little bit opposite of our normal inhale here, exhale round. As you inhale, your toes are tucked, and you're going to sit back and look up. And then as you exhale, you're going to push yourself forward, round chin to chest. Inhale, look up, sit back. Exhale, round chin to chest. Inhale, shoulders back, look up. Exhale, hips forward, round chin to chest. Two more times, inhaling. This time on your exhale, if you want to round and point your toes to the ceiling. Inhale, sit back, look up. Exhale, round, maybe point those toes. Inhale, come to center. And then exhale, find a seat. Just sitting quietly for a moment, in a comfortable seat, close the eyes, and just allow yourself to come into the room, onto your mat, and into your body. Taking that sensation to the spine, all the way from the base of your skull, all the way down to your sit bones, down to that little tailbone between the sit bones. And start to bring your attention to your breath. Just see if you can imagine that breath as you inhale, it runs down the spine to the tailbone. As you exhale, it goes up the spine and out the nose. Just kind of notice if you can start to visualize that breath coming in and running down the spine. 
and then leaving as it draws up the spine and out the nose. Being able to feel the breath, feel the spine, and feel the body. Just start to notice the sensations and start to come up with that breath. <coughs> Excuse me. It can be sensations of mind, it can be sensations of the body. Maybe it's emotional sensations. Just notice, no judging, no attaching. Just notice. If something comes up that wants to attach to you, acknowledge it, and then see if you can let it go and imagine it's in its own bubble or it's on a cloud and it drifts away. It may come up time and time again, but each time it comes up, let it go away. Staying in the present moment, moment with your breath and the sensations occurring in the body. Just easy, smooth breathing, no ujjayi, no clenching, just smooth and steady. Doesn't even need to really be deep. Just a few more moments here. As a reminder in our practice, the three principles of yin. The first principle is finding your first edge. So that edge of sensation in the softer tissues, the ligaments, the tendons, um, the casing that goes around our muscles, so not our muscles. And then allowing yourself to sit there, finding stillness at that edge. As that edge dissipates, finding a little deeper sensation, and then once again, finding stillness. Without fidgeting, without moving too much, and again, noticing the sensations that come up. The third principle is we'll sit for time. We'll hold each of these poses for about five minutes, unless it's a double-sided pose, and then we'll hold it for four minutes each side. At any time, if you feel you are complete in the pose or it no longer is benefiting you, feel free to come out and do a little counter pose at any time you need. Take a few more moments here to drop into your breath. Taking a nice deep inhale here. And sigh it out. Let those eyes blink open if they haven't already. And we're gonna transition onto our backs for supported bridge. So you're gonna to wanna to have something to lift your hips so your hips will come up higher than your shoulders. So if you have a block or two pillows or a bolster, something you're gonna prop yourself up on if you're using your blocks. Use the flattest edge because you want your whole sacrum to be supported. So you don't want any pinching going on in the low back. You don't want it pushing into your glutes. So if this is too low for you, you can stack two blocks. What I like to do is I like to take a block and then place a blanket underneath as well because it's just more cushy for my low back there, for that sacral area. So set yourself up. If there's any hair ties in the way, any hair bands in the way, go ahead and release those so your head can rest down. And then just pausing here. Taking your time and just notice for a couple moments and you might feel some sensation. So this is gonna get into the low back, into those lumbar spine, maybe even down to um, the joint where the lumbar meets that sacrum. If you're feeling good and this is no longer your edge, you can start to walk your feet out, maybe even straightening the legs. But remember, you wanna relax the legs. You wanna relax the muscle energy and allow yourself to hang out in those softer tissues. So it's less effort, more sensation, but we want to be able to create that stillness so we don't want to have to work too hard. So just here, if at any time this becomes too much, just bend your knees again and stay with that supported bridge. For those that are feeling they want or are at a place where they no longer have an edge, your arms can come back up over your head and reach back. 
Maybe your elbows bend and your hands interlink or your palms press on top of one another. Or maybe you grab opposite elbows. But if at any time your arms come overhead and you start to feel a little tingling sensation or a numbness happening in the shoulder, elbow, or fingers, you're taking that nerve that we worked and you're kind of pinching it and you don't want to do that so all you would do is just bring those elbows a little bit lower than your shoulders and that should create more space for that nerve. So again, if you find your mind is wandering away, bring it back to those sensations happening. And can you sit with those sensations? Can you allow those sensations to come up? Can you be curious about what's happening in the body? The nice part about this yin practice is it allows us to go a little bit more inward, allows us to build more self-awareness, some introspective on how our body reacts to different postures, different lengths of time, and how we react to that. If you find you do need a point of reference, maybe your mind keeps wandering off too much, bring it back to that first image of the air coming in and down the spine maybe to that place of most sensation in the low back. And as you exhale, feel that air coming back out, up the spine. Eyes can be slightly closed or fully closed. In about one more minute here. Throughout the practice today, I'll try to front load the talking so that it becomes less and less as we're deeper in the pose to allow you to go into your breath and into the pose, into your body a little bit deeper as time goes on. Taking a nice deep inhale and let it go. If your arms are overhead, slowly bring those down by your side first. And then slowly start to bend the knees, pausing there. And then just lifting your hips up ever so slightly to slide out anything you have underneath and return back to the ground. Keep the knees bent for a moment, just sit in stillness, allowing the effects or the rebound of the pose to take hold. And again, notice those sensations. If it feels uncomfortable, that's okay. If you're feeling any pain or tingling or numbness, you might have gone a little too far. So just make a little mental note of that. And next time, be mindful of that, maybe don't go as deep. And then your choice here, bring in any organic movements that are gonna feel good, maybe hugging the knees to the chest, maybe extending the legs long, maybe wiper, windshield wiper those legs. Whatever's gonna feel best to you at this moment, maybe the stillness feels good and you stay there. A few more moments here. 
And then we will be transitioning to our belly. We're gonna go into Sphinx pose and or maybe seal pose. So any props that you need for that. So when you're ready, go ahead and roll to your side and come all the way onto your belly. So in Sphinx pose, right, we're here on our elbows. If you would like, which I really like, is to have a bolster or a blanket underneath my chest or underneath your elbows even. I like to place it right there at the bottom of my sternum, right below my chest line. So it just gives me a little bit more support for my chest. And then my elbows can be underneath my shoulders. They can be out a little bit further if I need. And I'm going to relax those legs. Just kind of setting yourself up, start in Sphinx, and I will let you transition or I'll let you know the time to transition into seal pose if you're taking that position today. So for some of you, maybe elbows on the floor is not enough sensation in the low back. Maybe you want to prop your elbows up on a bolster or a pillow. You have that as an option. And you have a couple options for your shoulders. You can keep those shoulder blades drawn back and your head lifted. Maybe you start to let those shoulders round forward slightly and then round the chin toward the chest. If that's gonna to be too much for your neck, you always can prop your head up on your fists. If you have a block or something, maybe your head rests on that block so you can really relax through the neck. So finding whatever position is best for you. So again, first sensation is the low back. We're staying with that spinal extension. Second sensation might be in the elbows, the shoulders, maybe into the neck. And just check in with your glutes here. See if they're active. Try to relax them. And then start to settle into stillness. Noticing those sensations happening in the body and being curious about them. people that would like to transition for the next minute and a half to two minutes into seal pose. You would take those hands out a little bit wider, press them into the mat, and then straighten the arms. So then you're going to let your shoulders, elbows, and wrists kind of stack into one another as you press those hands forward, creating a little bit deeper sensation in the low back. So hands can be wide and long, or if you or somebody that has a little bit more mobility, less sensation, maybe your hands are narrower and closer into the body. But be mindful in that position that you're not tensing up through the glutes, through your buttocks. Try to relax those areas. So just being mindful that you're finding just an edge. So you're not going over the edge. You don't want to create injury or too much stress. I'm going to create just enough stress so that we are creating more mobility, a little bit more resilience in those softer tissues, those connected tissues in the low back. Settle in here to stillness. about one more minute here.
Those people that are in seal pose, slowly make your way back to Sphinx for the last few moments here. And take a nice deep inhale here. And side out. Slowly start to bring yourself all the way down to the ground. Bringing your hands and pressing the hands on top of one another, turn your head to one side. And whatever side you're looking at, draw that knee out to the side into half frog. Just a little counter pose to this, relieving through the low back. And if this is too much for you, you can always lay on your side with that top leg bent. Just kind of notice the effects of the pose. The sensations happening in the body. And go ahead and take that, that leg and draw it down. Turn your head to the opposite side. And take that opposite knee out. If this is too much for your neck in one direction, you can always rest your forehead on your hands, keep your spine neutral in the neck area. And then slowly bring yourself back to neutral. And then once again, we're going to roll onto our backs. So this next pose, getting into a little lateral uh, flexion of the spine, so making ourselves extend through the side waist. So coming into the banana asana. So if you have been doing this pose with me for a while and you know that maybe you need a little bit more um, intensity, more edge, Couple different things you can do if you have a chair or a table or a couch nearby, you can always put those feet uh, around on that couch. That's just gonna give you a little bit more sensation to keep your hips down. Also, you can take a blanket or a bolster and just lay it over the hips to keep the hips anchored. So that's gonna be an option. So I'm gonna start with the little anchor on my hips here. And then just laying on your back, take your arms up overhead and then either interlink um, palms hands, wrists, or elbows, whatever is accessible to you. And then lean toward the right. So you're gonna take your body to the right, creating a little C in your upper back, and just finding your first edge, pause there. And then taking your right leg, draw, or sorry, yes, your right leg over to the right. And then see if your left leg can match it. So just finding that, outer hip sensation. So you're gonna go into the IT band, that outer hip. Into the sideways to the left side, that left hip's gonna to wanna to curl up, see if you can keep it heavy. So finding this edge here. And then maybe right leg crosses over the left to keep it in place. Or a little deeper edge is that left leg crosses over the right leg. And again, this is where you could use if you needed to, you could use a chair, a couch, if you have a heavy dog, and they don't mind your feet on them. And then just pause here. Just noticing that sensation, so you have a little bit of contraction on that right side, so that's the part that we are working into, but then you have a little bit of openness, finding that expansion on the left side. So we're creating stress on the right. And hopefully finding some more openness, some stretch on that left side. Again, being mindful of any tingling or numbness that might happen in the shoulders. If that starts to happen, just start to bring that hand down. Maybe it comes across the body instead of overhead. If it starts to happen in the toes, that might mean that you're rolling a little bit too much into the pelvis. And you might want to come a little bit out of it with your legs. Find 
finding that stillness. Allowing yourself to just be with your breath, with those sensations. Take a quick scan of the body and just notice if you're holding on anywhere with that muscle energy, with contracting your muscles, and see if you can relax the muscles. And see if that takes you to a new edge in those softer tissues. Continue to keep yourself with the sensations in the body. If your mind wanders, attach it back to the breath. That sensation of the air coming in the nose, down the spine, and then up the spine and out the nose. more cycles of breath, about 30 seconds remaining here. Taking a nice deep inhale here. And sigh it out. Slowly bring the legs back to center first. And then start to bring the upper back to center and release the hands by the side. Pause there in just a little Shavasana. Noticing the effects of the pose. Maybe even bending the knees and bringing those hips back to neutral just in case they've shifted. And then take any other organic movements that feel good for the next few moments here before we transition to the other side, no rush. And again, sometimes maybe stillness is a little more of an easier rebound and then movement. We'll go to the second side. If your legs are still bent, go ahead and extend them out. Taking those arms up and overhead. Interlink either palms, wrists, or opposite elbows. And start to draw yourself toward the left. Keeping the shoulders heavy, keeping the hips neutral. Just checking in there. And then taking the left leg, move it to the left, and seeing if the right leg can match it. Pause there for a moment, let the feet drop wide. Just noticing that sensation on the outer hip. Into the right side waist, maybe into that right armpit. And then finding a little deeper edge if you'd like, taking maybe left foot on top of the right, or even deeper right foot on top of the left. And just kind of notice that each side's gonna be a little bit different, right? We're not symmetrical beings, even though we think we are. 
We hold different things. We live differently in each side of our body. So one side might not be as open or one side might be tighter than the other side. And no judgment of that, just acknowledge it. It's building that body awareness. Just knowing that in your body, knowing that in your mind, so that you can pay attention to that when you come up against that resistance. And adjusting the body in whatever way you need. Reminding yourself not to have any tingling or shoulders or in the elbows. But same goes for the knees and the ankles. Finding your stillness here. Tapping into the sensations of the body. The sensations of the breath. more seconds here. Taking a nice deep inhale here. And let it go. Slowly bring those legs back to center first. And then slowly bring the arms back to center and down by the side. Pause there for a moment. Allowing the effects, the rebound of the pose to settle in. And taking a few moments, doing any movements that feel natural. Maybe bending the knees, maybe windshield wiper, maybe just a little tilt and tuck of the pelvis. Whatever's going to feel best to you. So we're going to remain on our back and we're going to a little bit of flexion for the spine. But this is also going to target our hips. So this is where one, you can have a little bit more um, range of motion or leeway with your pose. We're going to go into happy baby, but maybe happy baby isn't something you want to do today. Maybe you want to use your strap and really have the strap be supportive of your legs. So you're, you would take that strap and make it a big loop. You can start to hug your knees in if you're not going to use the strap. But I would take the strap and I would just place it behind my back, loop it around me, draw my knees in, and take that strap, place it around either the backs of my thighs or around the soles of my feet. And so then I drop those knees down wide into that little happy baby motion. Right, so I don't have to worry about my arms holding my feet. I have the strap there to hold my feet. I can take that strap on the inside of my knees if I want my knees to go wider. 
If it's too wide, I can take that strap on the outside of my knees. So I'm just allowing that strap to hold, right? If I'm not gonna use the strap, if I don't have a strap, I'm just gonna grab up for my feet and let the weight of my shoulders draw my feet down. So with your hands, you have a little bit extra gravity or weight that comes down. With the strap, your shoulders can relax, but there's less gravity, less pull on those hips. So settling into the pose that's gonna feel best for you here. And maybe that's just hugging behind your knees and letting your feet flop over those legs. This might even be your pose, your edge today. I'm just settling in here. Finding your edge, finding your stillness, and allowing yourself to breathe. Try to relax your thighs. Relax your booty. Even try to relax your arms. So the only thing that's really gripping is those hands on your feet if you're not using the strap. Since this pose can be a little bit more intense on the edge, and it might be harder to stay for longer, there's going to be a few little off ramps that you can take at any time. So our first off ramp is coming here. If you are feeling like this is enough for you, this is too much in the hips today, you don't want to stay any longer, you just bring the soles of your feet together. And draw those feet down, knees wide, coming into a reclined Baddha Konasana or butterfly pose. And you can also then take your blocks or your cushions under your hips so that your inner groins are relaxed. So that's going to be your off-ramp at any time. Otherwise, if you're still here, maybe start to take those legs a little bit wider. So that's going to create a little bit more rounding in that low back. So it's going to kind of like a counter to those poses we've done before. I'm trying to just be with those sensations that are happening in the body. Anytime you feel like you need to take that off ramp, we'll just come into that recline butterfly stretch. We will all meet up there for the last minute. Sometimes there gets to be a little pinching sensation in that inner groin or even in the top of the hip where the hip flexors and the hip bone meet. So you have a lot of compression there. And sometimes that's uncomfortable and it doesn't like to be pinched, so having that little off-ramp helps. about 30 more seconds here in this hold, in this happy baby. So if people are having the strap around their feet, we're going to release that strap. And then start to bring the soles of the feet together, drawing the soles of the feet down to the ground. Let those knees drop out. If it's too much intensity on that inner thigh or the low back, propping up any pillows or blocks underneath those thighs. 
upper thighs to allow yourself to have a little bit more support, but still finding an edge. And then take a deep inhale once you're there and let it go. Tuning back into the sensation of the breath, the stillness of the body, and then those sensations happening. Take a nice deep inhale here. And let it go. Slowly, maybe even using those hands to help you draw those knees back up to center. Pause there with your knees bent for a moment. Noticing the effects of the pose. And then taking the legs out long, pausing there for a moment, stretching out the front of the thigh. Let the legs be heavy, let the toes drop out. And then taking any motions that feel natural to you, maybe drawing the toes in and out, maybe windshield wiper the knees again, whatever's gonna feel best to you. And I hate to do this to you because I know it feels so good on the ground, but we're gonna slowly make our way up. If you would rather not go up and you'd rather continue using the strap, we're gonna do caterpillar pose. So if you'd rather continue using that strap, you can place that strap around the balls of your feet and placing that strap around your upper back or even around the back of your head for support. So you have, you're just gonna let go. So you're gonna get into the spine, the knees, the hips still. So you have this as a pose. Otherwise, if you're not using this strap, mindfully roll yourself to one side. Continue pressing yourself up, coming up to seated, and extend those legs out for caterpillar. Lengthening those legs out. If it feels better to take the legs a little bit wider, you have that, but make sure you're propping yourself up if your tips, hips tend to tilt back so that they can naturally come forward. Another way that you can even do this is you can start with your knees bent and round yourself forward, hugging your knees and let your head drop down. So this might be a good starting position, especially since we've done a lot of that extension of the spine. Otherwise, start to lengthen yourself out forward. Maybe you start to lengthen forward. I usually like to place something up by my hips so that my belly kind of rounds and over that and I start to come forward. If it's okay for the neck, let your head hang. You're gonna get more into the upper neck tissues. If that's too much on your neck, use a prop, a pillow, maybe even your hands resting your head. Maybe even your hands are resting on your thighs and then your hands and head meet. So again, we're using the low back here. So we're doing a little counter to all of that extension we did before. We're rounding, finding some flexion especially in the low back. See if you can relax the legs, maybe even round the shoulders forward. And tapping into those sensations. And if you find that it gets to be too much under the knees, you can always roll up towels and place those under the knees just so the knees stay a little bit bent, but without using your muscle energy to keep them bent. I find that helps sometimes when the backs of my knees are bothering me with this pose. And as the edge dissipates, maybe the legs come a little bit closer together. 
maybe you round so much that your head's now closer to your knees or your shins, but the goal is not to get down lower, is to find that sensation along the spine, that edge of sensation into those connective tissues that connect our muscles to our bones. that connective tissue that wraps around our muscles that sometimes keeps us from doing a good forward fold because it's super tight. And it's just going to allow to find a little bit more elasticity for that tissue as we hold this for a long time. And again, be mindful of any tingling that might happen in the leg, sometimes pressing into the heel can create that. So maybe Putting a little prop under the thigh or under the calves allows your heel not to press into the floor as much. About two more minutes here. Tapping into the breath and the sensations that occur with the breath, settling into stillness, not only of the body, but also of the mind. One more minute here. Taking a nice deep inhale here. And sigh it out. Ever so slowly roll the spine up, taking your time, nice and slow. And just pause for a moment there. Allow the effects to settle. And maybe leaning back into those hands, turn the fingers out, lean back, open the chest, rock a little bit from side to side. And then any motions with the legs, maybe pointing and flexing the feet here, rolling the ankles. And from here, we're going to come into long-legged butterfly. So you're going to draw the soles of your feet in. So it's not super close, so it's not Baddha Konasana. So our legs are a little bit more wide. And again, you don't want to feel too much sensation on the outer knee, but you are going to feel some. If there's any pain, more props. So you can put pillows under your thighs, whatever you need. Again, rounding forward. So leaning forward, hands can stay by the side and you start to round. Maybe once again, you have that bolster across your lap. You round forward, hands to feet, maybe hands to a block, block to the head, whatever it is, rounding in forward, coming into that long-legged butterfly. So again, first target's the spine, so that's spinal flexion. The next target is probably the outer hips or the knees, maybe even the ankles. So making sure there's no stabbing sensations, any acute pain. 
little discomfort, a little bit of sensation is good. And sometimes as we settle in, we have to play with where our hands go. I, think, I know sometimes it feels better for my arms to be back behind me rather than out in front of me. I find out in front of me kind of my shoulders get in the way or it bothers my shoulders. Again, just settling in here, tuning into the breath. If it's okay for the neck, think of drawing the chin toward the chest. Can you let go of any muscular contractions you have going on? Maybe even in the jaw and the tongue. About one more minute here. a nice deep inhale and let it go again ever so slowly bring yourself up no rush enjoying the sensations as you lift and just pause for a moment And then as it feels good and natural, start to make any movements in the body that feels good, maybe extending the legs, maybe leaning back again into the hands. Sometimes I find after this pose, I like to bend my knees and just kind of lift my hips for a moment and then back down. Maybe windshield wipers, whatever feels best for you. And we're gonna start to make our way down to our backs again, coming into a twist to end. So we're going to lay down onto your back. Have anything that you might need for Shavasana handy before you make it to your back. And then once you're on your back, allow the knees to bend and just pause. So we're going to go into a version of the twist called twisted root, which one leg is going to be over the top of the other. If you find that that's not comfortable for you, you'll just bring two knees together and drop the two knees to the side without crossing them. So we're gonna start and dropping our knees over to the left. So shift your hips just slightly to the right. Take that right leg on top of the left. And then if you can, maybe that right toe tucks behind the left Achilles tendon or your calf, and then drop the knees to the left. The foot does not have to tuck behind though. And you might notice that there's a lot of pressure on that top knee 
without support. So you might need a little, maybe a pillow or a block or a blanket underneath that bottom or that top knee. Keeping your right shoulder heavy. Just allowing yourself to be supported. If you're feeling along the outer hip on the right side, into the low, mid, and upper back. And then maybe in the shoulder. With your right arm, your right hand can stay on your right ribs, or maybe it extends out. Maybe it even extends up overhead, all depending on how your shoulder feels on this side. So again, any pinching in the fingers or in the shoulder, you're going to just draw that elbow back down below your shoulder. Maybe even rest your hand on your ribs. Left hand can go wherever is comfortable. Maybe you would like a little extra weight on that top thigh. You just rest it on top of the thigh. Maybe it extends out. If your right arm's overhead, you can match it with your left. So if it feels okay for the neck, maybe you complete the twist of the spine, that rotation, and look over the right shoulder. Settle into your breath. Noticing how the breath affects the sensations happening in this pose. To allow yourself to feel your body more. Notice if you're gripping with the legs and can you relax energetically in the muscle contraction. About one more minute here. Taking a nice deep inhale here. And let it go. Slowly start to bring the hands back down by the side. And then slowly bringing those knees back up to center. Bring the hips back to center, both feet on the floor. Pause there for a moment. Just allow the effects of the pose to settle in. Noticing those sensations on the right side. Making any movements that you feel you need. Anything that will feel good right now, allowing yourself to take that. And allow yourself to come back to neutral. And we'll switch to the other side. So. Any props you had on the left side of your body, go ahead and bring them to the right side of your body. And then shift your hips to the left. Maybe taking that left leg over the right, maybe the left toes tucked behind the right ankle or calf. And then drop those knees over to the right. Letting that left 
shoulders stay heavy. And just notice where you need to be with any props on this side so that you can rest and relax those legs energetically. Checking in with that left hand, maybe it's on your ribs, maybe it's on your shoulder, maybe the arm extends out to the side, or maybe up above the head. Just be mindful of that shoulder, of the elbow. And then start to settle into stillness here, into the breath. Into the sensations of the body. Feels good. Maybe you're looking over that left shoulder. Again, as your mind wanders, as your body feels like it wants to fidget, bring yourself back to your breath. Be curious about that sensation. And can you just be with that sensation with your breath in your body? Scan over the body a moment. Notice where you might be gripping with any muscle contraction. And see if you can let that go. One more minute here. Taking a nice deep inhale. And let it go. Bring those hands back down by the side if they're overhead. And then mindfully bringing the knees back up. Soles of the feet to the floor. Bring those hips back to center and pause. Hands either by the side or resting those hands on the belly. Just noticing the effects on the left side. And then starting to transition into a little Shavasana. Using any props that you might need under the body. Doing any movements that you need to to let go of that last pose so that you can rest. Maybe even taking some time to cover the eyes. Maybe even cover the chest and pelvis. Allowing yourself to drop in a little bit deeper. Once you've arrived in your form of Shavasana, allow yourself to take a nice deep inhale. Sighing it out, letting it go. And once again, just finding stillness. Allow yourself to surrender here into the sensations of the body with your breath. And 
And just being one with your body here on your mat. Just a few moments here in silence. I'll bring us out of this with one sound of the bell. Take rest. Feeling free to stay here if you feel you need more time to restore from the practice. Otherwise, start to deepen your breath. Staying on your back for a few more moments, just deepening the breath, matching the breath coming in the nose, down to your tailbone, along the spine, 
And then back up from the tailbone along the spine and out the nose. Take one more cycle of breath like that. And then start to bring some movement into the body. Maybe start to bend the knees. Maybe give yourself a long stretch. Whatever is going to feel good to bring some movement back into the body. And then just noticing where your energy level is. If you're feeling calm and you're feeling like you want to continue to keep this calm energy throughout your evening and once you transition off your mat, you're going to transition over onto your right side. And use your right arm to pull up. For people that feel like they need a little bit more energy as their night goes on and are feeling they want to have a little bit more of that, you're going to roll to your left side so that your right arm is on top. So you can use your left arm as a pillow. And that's just going along with the energy lines. The left sides are more calming and cooling side. Our right sides are more energetic and heating side. And then when you're ready, mindfully press yourself up, coming up to seated. If your eyes have opened along the way, let, allow them to close. And just rest there for a moment with your palms on your thighs. And again, visualize that breath along the spine. As the breath is entering and going down the spine, notice how the spine is feeling, all the way from the base of the skull, all the way down to that tailbone. And then tune in energetically, notice how you're feeling. Again, no judging, just noticing. I'm going to bring your hands to rest in front of your heart center, either palms pressing or hands cupping over your heart. Take a moment there. Allowing yourself to be in the room, on your mat, and in your body. Thanking yourself for taking time to explore your spine, to allow yourself to restore, and do something great for yourself. We'll seal the practice in together either with one side of the breath or one home. Exhale fully. Take a nice inhale. Oh. Bowing your head slightly. Take a moment, think of one thing in your life that you truly are grateful for today. And then hold on to that image in your mind's eye as you raise your head with a smile. Thank you for joining me. Drink lots of water. Each veggies wear sunblock. We'll see you again soon. Namaste.